Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Better Events Podcast. This week, we are sharing a book that we read in an event professional's book club called Built to Belong by Natalie Frank. This book is all about community over competition, which is something that we often talk about here on the Better Events Pod. So we're excited to dive right in and hope that you have some key takeaways and learn some things about community over competition and the importance of collaboration. So here we go. Welcome to the Better Events Podcast. Join two event strategists, Logan Clements and Mary Davidson, who believe we can all create, host, and attend better events. In this podcast, you will learn about event strategy and actions that you can use today as an event host, planner, or manager. Hear directly from the people who are creating innovative and inspiring events today and tomorrow, and grow your business along the way. Now, let's get started, and thanks for listening to the Better Events Podcast. Hi, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Better Events Podcast. I'm Logan Clements, one of your co-hosts, and I'm joined by fellow co-host Mary Davidson. And before we dive into our topic this week, talking all about community over competition, we're going to do our little icebreaker. So we're talking about a book. So this one, this theme is on the theme of the book uh, a little bit. Mary, what book are you reading right now? And it can't be the one we're about to talk about. Okay. <laughs> um I'm often reading a lot of books, and I'm usually like a fourth of the way through of all of them. So I will just name two. One is um, Be Our Guest by the Disney Institute. I came across it in a bookstore and basically just talks about performing the art of customer service. And if anybody does customer service well, it's Disney. So I was like, hmm, I just want to learn more. So that's one. The second one is, um, and now I'm forgetting what it's called. It's a, uh, it's business etiquette, basically. So it's an etiquette book and we can link it because I'm not describing it well, but it talks about professionalism and etiquette. And our good friend, um, Laura Lloyd recommended it to us and she does um, classes and webinars and things like that on um, protocol and etiquette, but for the event industry. So shout out to her, but that's why I'm reading the book. <laughs> I like it. We love a good recommendation from folks. For me, I you gave me time to double check the titles of the books that I was reading, so I get to cheat a little bit. But for me, I always am reading a good mystery novel or thriller. I read Nancy Drew growing up and then got into Agatha Christie books. So I'm currently really into this series by uh, Rachel Hall, and it's a female detective in um, L.A., and she's awesome. And the book's called City of Saviors, and I've slowly been working my way through that series. And then I for like I always try to read then a nonfiction one with it. And this one's another fun one I picked up at the library on impulse and it's called the little book of life skills. And it's by Erin Zamet Ruddy. And she, um, it's, she's like a, an, what is she? A, she's a writer for, I think a couple different lifestyle magazines. And so she's compiled a book of like 150 expert tips on things like dealing with dinner, managing your email, how to make your bed, and they're super short, digestible, like couple pages on each of these tips. And it's just been fun to kind of take that as like a little breezy um, break from all my other reading and, and things that I'm doing. I love that. And I love that you shared like a like fiction type book as well, too. I think those are I actually read a lot of those, too. So it's nice to shake it up. Thank you. They're my absolute um, favorite. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Gives your brain a break sometimes, which is needed. So. Cool. Well, um, we are going to talk about why we chose this topic and kind of introduce it a little bit. But today we're talking about community over competition and debriefing a book that we've read called Built to Belong. And so we recently had a book club that Logan organized with other event pros. And so we read this book, book Built to Belong, and it's by Natalie Frank. And so Natalie, I don't know if this is necessarily the right way to say it, but basically she coined the phrase or the hashtag community over competition, which is a phrase that we use on this podcast all the time. And so now that we've called it out, you're, you've you either probably already noticed it because we really talk about, well, we're talking about community over competition again. Um, but if you haven't noticed it before now, hopefully you're just going to always hear it because we're really calling it out this time. So today we are going to share with you what stood out to us from the book. And then also we really want to invite you to stick around because this podcast is a community. We're trying to build a community and we want to help cultivate collaboration um, so if you're on board with this idea, that's great. And then if you're maybe like not super on board with it or you need to be convinced, then you should definitely stick around because we are going to hopefully convince you that this is highly worth your time. It's something that is really important to us and we do think that it should be important to other people. And so please stick around and not only for that reason, but also 
we have a special announcement about this topic at the end of the episode. So also stick around for that. So that was a lot, but we're excited. So let's do this. Logan, are you ready to dive right in? Oh, I'm so ready. This I, I've loved. I've loved this book and the conversation that we had in that book club. So I'm excited to bring a snippet of that to our listeners. Totally. Yeah. So, so you organized the book club. So why did you want to start the book group first of all? And then why did you choose this book? Yeah, I have always loved reading. And I will say I was a part of some like mother daughter book clubs and things when I was growing up. And I just always felt like I remembered the book more when I discussed it to folks with folks. And then I joined a book club group here pre COVID that was through our library in Seattle. And I liked it because it made me read books that I personally probably wouldn't have picked off the shelf. And some of the books were really good and thought provoking. Others were just okay, but it was always just fun to gather with people. And I kind of had this idea with these event pros of a bunch of women, it's turned out to be a lot of women, but mainly women that I know from different events and just wanted an excuse to kind of bring everybody together and meet each other and you know, a lot of networking and connections can be made by doing an activity. I feel like we've talked about that on this podcast before. And so by doing a book club where we're focused on a book, it's an excuse to bring everyone together and exchange ideas and spark maybe new ideas. And I just, I also personally want to read more nonfiction. And I figured by having this kind of group as an accountability partner, I would read a little bit more nonfiction uh, versus my thrillers and mystery novels that I will always continue to, to read through. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. And it was great to be a a part of it. And I also noticed as soon as we were done, folks were using that like as an automatic community to like talk about other events or needs or, you know, things they had coming up. So thank you. It was great. You had a virtual event idea come out of the book club. So I would consider it a success from the first meeting. So, and then I've always, we've talked about community over competition. I kind of had heard of Natalie Frank before. I knew she had a book coming out. Uh, so the timing kind of just worked out perfectly that then when she was, had just recently launched this book that we were starting the book club. And I feel like because it's such a theme, both here on the podcast and both in Mary and I, like our own business and personal lives, this whole idea about community over competition, I couldn't think of a better book to kind of kick off this group where again, if you look at all the women in the group right now, you'd probably say, Hey, they're all competitors. They all do very similar, like somewhat similar things. But in my mind, it's only going to make us all stronger to become connected. And if anything, just bring, make everyone's business grow. So I figured something like this would at least be thought provoking and spark some conversation with the group. Yeah, definitely. And to further set the stage about the book, we thought it would be helpful just to read the preface. And this is like short, we cut it down. And so this is to help you understand what the book is about. And then we're going to talk about our takeaways. So um, the preface from the book says, many of us feel more alone than ever despite living in the most connected society in human history. We need to belong in the same way that we need oxygen. Our physical bodies require it. We perform better and have greater successes as individuals when we are connected to the collective. Join author Natalie Frank as she shares her story of longing for connection in the chaos and lessons learned on her journey to true belonging. We are destined for something better. We're made for so much more. Knit into the fabric of our DNA, we were built to belong. That fires me up. So if you're not fired up, keep listening. I think for me, um, just hearing it again with the preface, I do, again, her, the hashtag is really community of our competition, but this idea that we're all built to belong, I, I feel like it also touches on what we as event professionals are trying to do every day where it doesn't matter if you're someone who owns a venue or you're a planner or you're a DJ or a caterer or anybody who kind of works in events that like, this is the heart of honestly, what the event industry is about is also about creating spaces where people feel like they belong and feel connected. And so I think hearing her just even that start of saying like, we need it like oxygen just makes me feel validated. And again, what we're doing um, as event professionals, it's something that's just so important because we're creating those spaces that these connections can be made. But Mary, where did you first hear about community over competition? Yes, I should classify the hashtag community over competition. I want to say it was from you, but honestly, I don't really remember either. So if you remember the distinct time that we started talking about it, let me know. But all I know is that we've talked about it for a while. Um, And I don't know if it's just like a a buzzword that I heard and then it just like stuck, whether it's from you or somebody else. I have no idea. But I know as soon as I heard it, that it stuck out. And then I hear it in other places, whether it is the hashtag or the phrase, um, like, like Logan, you were reading The Magic of Tiny Business and you have a post, I think, on your social media so people can check it out. But if you know what it, if you remind, like we can look it up. So remind me if you don't know what it says, but basically that book 
says community over competition, but in a different way. So it's this phrase, at least, that has been around. But the hashtag itself, I think I learned through the podcast. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's different ways to to talk about it. But I think it's that the gist of it, if this is a new concept for you as you're listening, is really that we're all better together. And the idea that most people would see their competition as competition. So people who do similar things to you are a competitor of yours and someone that you shouldn't be, you know, and with that, with that being a competitor, there's certain things you should do with them and you shouldn't do with them. And this mindset of community over competition is so, such an idea that like, it comes from Rising Tide Society. So I guess I should say first, I heard it, I think I'm pretty sure I heard it through Rising Tide Society, which Natalie Frank founded. And it's an organization to bring uh, creative professionals together and event professionals, event planners, pros, producers falls under one of those categories of just kind of being a creative professional. And so I started going to some of their meetups and it was this kind of idea of all these people on stage or in these virtual halls were technically all doing the same job and in theory should be competing against each other for clients. But it's this mindset that a rising tide lifts all boats. And if I'm helping you be the best version of you, at the end of the day, it's only going to help the industry as a whole. And therefore, then maybe eventually I'll be impacted too. But it's not really this kind of like, it's not a zero sum game where if you win, Mary, I lose. And that was something that I found so refreshing and looking back at how I started in events. I only got to where I was because I was surrounded by people who had that mentality and it maybe didn't call it community or competition or how we've, you know, said it that the power of community or any ways you could talk about it. But that was really how I got started was folks who saw me not as a competitor, but as someone that, you know, by helping me, they were helping themselves and the industry and everyone together. It wasn't seen as this weird transactional kind of uh, relationship. Same. And that's something that has surprised me a lot about the industry is that it has been so collaborative and that isn't something that I at all expected. And it's been like the, the greatest the refreshing thing ever. And when I talk to people about it, they're like, like other event professionals, they're like, oh yeah, there's, there's plenty to go around. There's room for all of us. And so we can just find ways to work together. And it blows my mind even now that people are so willing. Now you do get your occasional few people who maybe aren't willing, but for the most part, it really seems like people are willing. Now I do want to caveat this and say, I, we've had some of our event friends kind of mention their struggles though with this. So I do think it kind of depends too on your area. Maybe, maybe your niche in the event industry, maybe also where you like physically live. That seems to be a struggle. It seems to be more competitive in certain areas. Logan and I are lucky because we're near Seattle, which is a big city and there's lots of event opportunities. But that being said, a lot of the events we do actually are not in Washington state at all. And so there's kind of that, that makes it interesting then um, that perhaps this is more of a, uh, I'll say like national collaboration that that we've experienced. Yeah, I definitely from uh, Seattle's got the stereotype of the Seattle freeze and not to say anything against the local community, but there's definitely that kind of the Seattle freeze, meaning people will be nice to you, but nothing kind of no follow up um, for me was just different than how, again, I was I was living abroad. I was in Shanghai. And so an international atmosphere compared to the U.S. is just that's completely different, let alone if you're going somewhere where it seems to just be a little bit more local based. So I know for me, I was really surprised that there wasn't it didn't seem as upfront. And then I've just learned it takes time from being here now. I do feel like you and I have found some local connections that definitely re this resonates with them. But I've definitely seen I'm I found faster connections with other friends who are virtual, who clearly just have the same value of this community over competition. And like what's in, I guess, an example for you, if you're trying to still figure out what we're talking about would be like, what's what's the opposite of community over competition would be like gatekeeping. The idea that there's only space for one person up top. And this is something as two women here, I feel like there's always that queen bee syndrome that you can talk about as like a corporate example of gatekeeping, where there's only a seat for one woman at the table and therefore she has thinks she has to keep all the other women down so she can keep her seat versus a community over competition would be like, why don't we just make the table bigger? Let's just put more seats in the table, you know, and more people can join. And I, I think anywhere you go in any city, in any country, you're going to find gatekeepers and people who push back and think this is mine. And if I, you know, let you in and how have you work for me, like you're just going to try to poach this client from me. And those people will always exist. But I also am really encouraged by some of the folks that we've met uh, through this podcast, through other event connections um, that I feel like have embraced this abundance mindset of there's plenty of clients for all of us. We all need help when it comes to different events. And 
if anything, just giving each other opportunities just makes us all stronger and all look better at the end of the day, which is really the essence, I feel like, of what we're talking about and what Natalie Frank's tackling in this book. Yeah, I think traditionally, I personally have had a scarcity mindset because I think that's what I like was experiencing, but also I just perceived like the entrepreneurial world to be. Um, and that's why I'm so glad that we're in events specifically, because I think maybe it's a little different than other industries, perhaps, I don't know. Um, but some of the things that Natalie says in her book, like one of the phrases, well, I guess backing up a little bit, Logan, you mentioned like, well, so if someone's having a hard time grasping, a listener is having a hard time grasping what this is. It's like, if you have a friend or a colleague who gets an event and then you're jealous of them, like that's kind of what this is, is it's not necessarily that that the jealousy is bad. It's how how you're how you interpret it and then how you react. Like I um if I see somebody who gets a really cool event, I've kind of trained my reaction to be, wow, how cool. Like maybe I'm a little jealous, but also that means that maybe I could get an event like that. And that's kind of the the that's how she challenges the mindset, I guess. So tell me if I'm not explaining this well, Logan, but basically it's just to kind of change your mindset instead of saying, oh, dang it. How did she get that? It's, oh, wow, good for her. Maybe I can also do that. So the idea of it builds the community and it also encourages you to try harder <laughs> and do more. And so it provides motivation in that way. That's how it makes sense in my brain, at least. Yeah, which I think also takes practice. I will let listeners know for me when it came hard. up in our book club discussions was like, it's it's hard not to just your first reaction of like, I'm jealous. And that's like, okay to feel that way. I think what we're talking about then is like, do you sit in that jealousy and just kind of be like, Ugh, why them, not me and kind of spiral there? Or can you reframe it as Mary just said, and that's such that like positive way of if they can do it, so can I. And thinking about it too, if, if they can do it, they're meeting people. You know, if I keep working with this person, who knows, maybe that opportunity will come to me as well. Um, it's, it's just something that I think is so empowering to remember as an event professional. And like, there's so much that we also learn, like Mary and I hypothetically on paper, you could say do the exact same thing, but also, but we don't, you know, at the end of the day, maybe our core function is, but some people might really love Mary's style. Other people might love my style. It doesn't mean they couldn't love both our styles, but sometimes it's just the timing of when the right person got in front of, you know, one of us. But that also doesn't mean then that by when Mary brings me in for an event, I'm sitting there going, oh, I'm Logan Clements of Logan Strategy Group. You should work with me and not Mary. You know, that's that kind of competitor mindset versus that's something else. I just feel like I know I blew a couple event minds when I moved back here to the U.S. was just being like, oh, if I work on your team, I'm branded as your team. If you want me to have an email address with your company, like I'm just Logan and I'm happy to be under your, your company or, or whatever it is. It doesn't have to have that. I always call it ego. And if apologies, if you're someone who really loves your company name and you're identify as that, and that's totally your jam. But for me, it's just, I love doing the work and I'm totally okay. If I'm branded as me, that's great. If I'm branded as your company and I'm not sitting there trying to like take that opportunity away from you, if anything, I'm trying to learn and grow with you and learn and then be like, oh, now I can come back and hopefully refer back work to you if you're good at what you do. You know, it's it's just that kind of like that kind of a mindset versus seeing it as a competitor, I guess, the whole time. Yeah. And one of the quotes from the book that I really like is she said, we must choose to celebrate others, not just when it's easy, but also when it's hard, which I think really fits what we're talking about, because it can be hard to, to have the celebratory moments for other people and their successes. But that's the point. Yeah. And I think one of the repetition. things with, yeah. with this book that I love too was her talking about finding your tribe and finding your people. And just if you are someone who's listening to this and being like Logan and Mary, I can't believe like, you know, you guys are just kind of up in the up in the sky with your your crazy ideas because I can't find my my people. I would encourage you to to reach out both to you can reach out to us at bettereventspod at gmail.com or Mary or I individually because those people are out there. They are. And I've connected with some really amazing women in what I do, you know, virtually and fostered really strong connections with folks that I've never even met in person. But I would consider them really close friends because of things that we've done uh, virtually together. So even if you're in a location that maybe isn't as well resourced as a Seattle or Tacoma area or something like that, like this book just kind of makes you get your brain thinking about what options are out there with Facebook groups, with meetup groups um, and just the opportunity to find find those people because 
I think it's also hard to believe community over competition if you're someone coming from the experience where you have experienced gatekeeping. It's very hard. Like the reason why this feels so nuanced is because so many people have experienced gatekeeping. And so when they make it up, they make it to the top, they don't want to let other people up there because maybe that's just, they go, you have to earn your way. That's just how it goes. I don't, I don't give out free passes. You know, there's a mentality there, but um, I think there's also a way of just trying to make things better for those that come after you. And that's something I feel like Mary with our podcast here, we're trying to do is make it easier for other people. And we're not charging for this information for you to listen to our podcasts. If you want to buy us a coffee, you're welcome to with the link in the show notes, but you're also like, you know, it's just free information for you to learn. And that's like the cool part. I feel like this community over competition is like, we're all making each other better, um, way better than we ever would have been on our own. Yeah. And if this is still a challenge for you to, to wrap your head around, that's okay. It does take time, but something else that might be a good segue for you is that, um, if you think about it, your competitors are the ones also who can empathize with you because you're in the same industry and they get it. So that right there is a good in to at least starting a conversation with somebody. Maybe it is just a, I'm struggling with this. Let's talk about it. And that's all it is, is like a, an innocent conversation. And then maybe it can turn into more of a, a collab, collaboration type experience. But but yeah, if nothing else, hopefully that is motivating you and doesn't make you feel alone because people in your industry know what you're going through. So you can talk about it with them. And so I like that a lot. Yeah. And I think it's something you can also put into practice if you ever go to networking events. It's getting away from the kind of transactional relationships of, oh, if I help you, you will help me. I mean, the comp, the concept, I feel like, of community over competition and her whole book with Built to Belong is you're building a community where eventually, yes, it will help you eventually, but every interaction is not going, I'm only going to help you if I know there's going to be a benefit to me. It's just kind of like, you need a florist? Oh, I have this great florist that I know. Let me just connect you. I'm not asking for a commission. I'm not asking for something, but I'm going to benefit just by, I mean, so much of I say with events is like, I benefit from my community because if I know good people, I only look better. Now, the hard part, if I know bad people and I recommend them, then yeah, that does hurt. But often it is. It's like, I only look better if I'm recommending a really cool planner and a really good florist. You guys work together. Now they both are like, Logan knows good people. And you know, that only helps me even if I'm not a part of that. So it's something to think about too, if you go to networking events, just thinking about how you can help others um, and make connections for others. Because I will say I've gotten some business in a very roundabout way from, from that very concept of just being helpful and not necessarily saying, you know, oh, do you need help with your event? And that's what I'm offering you. It's it's doing those kind of introductions. And then I'm top of mind at some random time for someone who comes back to me and it's like, oh yeah, Logan, I did need some help on this event. Are you available? So like it, it's kind of very roundabout thinkings, but um, there's definitely value in it. How do you feel about that, Mary? Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. And she, Natalie in her book gives some um, like some tips, which we love tips here on the podcast about things that someone could do if they're trying to, to build that community. And so she mentions, mentions things like, um, think about people who want to, to grow your relationship with and make a list of them, write them down and then reach out to one a week. So maybe it's a phone call or it's a text or it's like a LinkedIn message just to keep the relationship going. Like that's it. And, um, then like keep them in mind too. If you have an event you're going to see if they're going to or just little little ways to reach out it's like building any relationship i mean honestly if we're just talking about that in general that's what people want and so just taking the time to build your business relationships in a way that you build your personal ones you know just the, the outreach and things like that i think you're gonna have success um but sometimes it's it's gonna take a little bit longer so please don't feel motivated I'm don't feel, <laughs> please, feel feel motivated. Please don't feel demotivated by what we're talking about because it can be a lot, but baby steps. So just try try to do a little bit at a time, and I think you'll have a lot of success, um, especially in our industry. Yeah, I think there's a lot to a lot of little steps you can do to start to find it, and don't get discouraged if you don't find it initially. Again, I wish I could go back and tell 2019 me this advice because it was, I feel like I came in really hot and heavy trying to meet lots of people and then was really discouraged by not hearing much back. But to Mary's point of just doing one thing a week, um, like Natalie had said in the book, I think just makes it feel scalable and doable when you're doing all these other things. And my advice would be to just be in it for the long haul because sometimes like Mary's saying, talking about and having to be vulnerable maybe about some struggles you're having or problems you're trying to solve with your business. Maybe that's a conversation you can't break out the first meeting you have with someone and you need to kind of feel out a little bit. 
you know, if, if they also are in the same mindset of abundance or community over competition, and then you can get into the deeper stuff. But I will say over now with relationships I've built over the years, I have people I can call if I'm dealing with a, a challenge with a client that I can know I can, you know, confidentially, confidentially get some good advice from someone else who knows exactly what I'm going through and can tell me from their experience how they've handled it in another world where maybe I would have felt very alone and isolated in that situation. So again, it's only helping me be a better version of me by being connected with this community. Absolutely. I love it. So I hope you all stuck around with us for this conversation. I hope that you gained something from it. If nothing else, take time to just think about it more. I think as as at least it becomes top of mind for you, you'll see opportunities where you can begin to collaborate more and build this, these partnerships that are out there. So, And feel free to reach out to us. Like Logan said, we're happy to, to chat and share some resources with you as well. Um, but I think this is where we are going to do our quick little teaser that we mentioned at the beginning of the episode, Logan. We mentioned that if you stick around, we have a special announcement. So you want to share that announcement with us, Logan? I'm so excited. I get to do the honors. Well, Mary, thank you. Um, we are actually going to have the author, Natalie Frank, of this book that we just talked about on the podcast. So keep an eye on your feeds. It's not going to be the episode right after this. It is upcoming, but we are so excited. We're going to be able to talk with Natalie herself and hopefully give you even more tidbits and nuggets of information about this whole idea of community over competition and why we are all built to belong. So keep an eye on your podcast feeds because it's going to be so good. Super excited. We're, we truly are really happy to have her. It's going to be really cool. So look her up and do some research in the meantime, and then you'll get excited too. So <laughs> looking forward to that. Um, so Logan, is there anything else you want to add? Or if not, then I think it's time for our bonus tip from you today. It is bonus tip time. So for this one, your bonus tip comes to post event things. So when you get to your post event, just don't skip the post event debrief or wrap up call with your client. We have a post event feedback report. You can send us an email out. We will send that to you. I use that more as like an internal document and then I'll usually polish it up, maybe add or subtract some things before I send it to my client. But just some basic questions that I like to ask my clients after an event is what feedback have they received from attendees after the event? How about sponsors, speakers, or key decision makers? Because these quotes are really helpful for them to hear, but it's also helpful for me to hear um, and know. And so I can apply to my events moving forward. And then my favorite question for any client is always, what would you do differently next year? And it's really interesting to compare their answers to things that I've thought of or my team has come up with after an event. So don't skip it. It's always easy to, I mean, ride the enjoyment of being done with the event and all the good feelings you get from having successfully pulled it off. But don't forget to have that debrief. Your future you and future client will thank you later for taking the time to do that. Good bonus tip. Love it. And as Logan said, feel free to reach out to us to get that template um, at bettereventspod at gmail.com or reach out to us about any questions, thoughts, anything like that. We'd love to hear from you. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Better Events Pod. And with that, just thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Better Events Podcast. And we will see you all again next week. Bye.